This is Daniel Krasafi. Welcome to this fifth audio presentation. And this time we're going to talk about vitamins and minerals and their roles in increasing immune function. Now, vitamins and minerals um, are what are called micronutrients. The body needs them in very, very small amounts, but that does not mean they're not important. So they're micronutrients in comparison to proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that we need in much, much larger amounts. However, the fact that they're needed in very small amount does not mean they're not necessary because one of their most important roles is actually to help the body use the proteins, the fats, the carbohydrates uh, effectively. The major role of vitamins and minerals in, when it comes to immunity is as coenzymes and as catalyzers, increasing immune reactions, increasing reactions in the body, uh, and, and supplying what the body needs to increase immune activity. We'll be talking about a few of the vitamins and minerals that play a role in immunity. Those are the most important. We will not talk about all of them. Uh, all vitamins and minerals are really required for immunity, but we'll talk about a few select ones. I will not be talking about dosage of supplements in this uh, presentation for a variety of reasons, the main reason being that how much you have, need to take as a supplement will depend on how much you get in your diet um, and, and how much you need to supplement, which is the reason for the term supplement, um, from a diet that's deficient. Um, that's very personal. It's very individual. You'll have to read up on it, inform yourself, check with your health professional. Um, what I can suggest is for those of you who want to know more, my book on stress, Syndrome S, does have a section where I talk about vitamins and minerals. And my book, unfortunately in French, Compense Mon Naturopath, has a significant amount of information on the role of vitamins and minerals, doses, and so on. If you're interested, you can also consult my website, drkrasafi.com, uh, where I do talk about vitamins and minerals. We've got articles and videos, both in French and in English, uh, on the role of nutrients and a variety of other factors in natural health. So let me start by talking about one of the most important vitamins for an immune point of view, and that's vitamin A. Vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin. It's a vitamin that can stay in the body. And so we have to be careful with fat-soluble vitamins like A and D because extremely large amounts can be toxic. The body does retain them but they are very safe in normal amounts and much safer than most of the drugs we would consume anyway. So vitamin A is required for the eyes and for vision. It has a role to play in, in fighting cancer. There's research behind that. And it has a role to play in the health of epithelial cells, and we'll see why this is very important. It's also required for the growth, uh, overall growth of the body and for bone development. From an immune point of view, vitamin A plays a role by maintaining healthy epithelial cells. Now, what's an epithelial cell? Well, epithelial cells are the surface cells of many glands, but particularly of the organs, uh, the respiratory tract, the gastrointestinal tract, the genitourinary tract, and the skin. Now, why is this important? Well, for a bacteria or a virus or a fungus or even a parasite to cause significant damage, that microorganisms or its toxins have to get into the bloodstream. And your skin and your mucosa uh, whether, again, it's your respiratory tract, your genitourinary tract, or your gastrointestinal tract, act as a barrier, a selective barrier. We could say analogically that it's a little bit like, well, a screen in a window. Uh, the screen's objective is to have small holes that will let the air through but doesn't let the mosquitoes through. Well, it's, it's not the great analogy, but it gives you an idea of the role of these epithelial cells. So by maintaining healthy epithelial cells, vitamin A facilitates the barrier activity uh, of your, your skin, your gastrointestinal tract, your respiratory tract, your genitourinary urinary tract against invasion, so to speak, by bacteria, by viruses, and by fungus. The major dietary sources of vitamin A are your dairy fats. So we're not talking about skimmed milk products uh, or skimmed dairy products, but fatty products, butter, um, eggs, especially egg yolk, actually, uh, liver, and your green and yellow vegetables. Now, when it comes to green or yellow vegetables, they don't have vitamin A per se. They have beta-carotene that the body has to convert into what we would call preformed vitamin A or, or real vitamin A, if you wish. The drawback with this is if you have thyroid problems, especially if you've had a thyroidectomy, but also in hypothyroidism, you may have difficulty converting beta-carotene into vitamin A, in which case vitamin A in foods and vitamin A as a supplement would be more important uh, and, and a better source for you than getting just beta carotene from your vegetables. You need the vegetables. They have other effects that, that are helpful for your health, but they wouldn't be a good source of vitamin A for you. 
Vitamin B6 is also important from an immune point of view. It's required for the production of hemoglobin. It plays a role in the production of neurotransmitters like GABA or gamma amino butyric acid, production of energy, production of serotonin. Serotonin is that neurotransmitter that helps to sleep, relax, reduces the perception of pain, has anti-anxiety effects, anti-depression effects, controls appetite. Um, a lot of the research on vitamin B6 has been done around the role of vitamin B6 in reducing certain premenstrual symptoms or PMS symptoms, particularly those associated with water retention, uh, swelling breast, breast pain, headaches, um, muscle pain, water retention uh, in the premenstrual period. A physician in the United States by the name of Ellis wrote a book entitled The Doctor Who Looked at Hands. Ellis was a surgeon who was doing surgery, among other things, for carpal tunnel syndrome. And uh, his research showed that vitamin B6 could, in many, many cases, prevent uh, a surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome. So B6 has been used for carpal tunnel syndrome. And B6 reduces homocysteine. Homocysteine is that protein that causes damage to the inside of the artery wall. And that's when cholesterol can stick on it and you get a hardening of the artery. So it has a role to play in reducing the risk of heart disease. Now, B6 intake is very important for optimal immune system function, especially in older individuals. As we get older, we actually convert less B6 into its active form called pyridoxal phosphate. And so we actually need more B6 than we would if we were younger. Now, deficiency B6, whether we're older or younger, can result in decreased immune production or production of antibodies that are needed to fight infections. It can reduce the body's production of white blood cells, including T cells. And vitamin B6 helps the body make a protein called interleukin-2, which helps to direct the action of white blood cells against bacteria, viruses, and other cells, and not against your own cells. So it helps to reduce the risk of autoimmune disease and increases the immune system capacity to fight real intruders. The major sources of vitamin B6 in the diet are whole grain cereals, yeast, meat, wheat germ, bananas, and vegetables. Now, an important point with all these nutrients and all of the vitamins is that if they're organic, if they're picked ripe, or if they're local, they will have more nutritional value than your standard store-bought products that come from five, 6,000 kilometers or 3,000 kilometers away um, and that are not organic. So these are important factors in choosing the foods. Vitamin Z6, or vitamin C, I'm sorry. Vitamin C is probably the best known of all the uh, nutrients when it comes to immune health. Uh, it helps the body handle all types of stress, which we often don't associate vitamin C with. It's required for the synthesis of the body's main stress hormones in the adrenal glands, including adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol, histamine. It's a major, major antioxidant. It has cancer effect, or anti-cancer effect, I'm sorry, <clears throat> and it helps to improve cholesterol balance. It increases HDL, the good cholesterol, and it lowers LDL, the bad cholesterol. Now, vitamin C also functions as a mild antihistaminic. It does reduce histamine, and it's required for the production of collagen. And you'll often read on the bottles of vitamins in Canada, Health Canada permits the companies to write that vitamin C is good for your bones, your hair, your skin. It doesn't mention immunity, unfortunately. And yet, vitamin C has significant effects on the immune system. It has antiviral effects. It helps to boost the immune system by increasing the production of white blood cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, natural killer cells. It increases the levels of antibodies, or what are called immunoglobulin, uh, IgAs, not the food store, the immunoglobulin, IgGs and IgMs, or immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin M, which fight infections. It increases the body's production of interferon, uh, and it modulates prostaglandin synthesis. Now, an interesting note is that for most animals, vitamin C is actually a hormone. The body produces it on its own. The only exceptions are fruit bats, um, guinea pigs, humans, and the great apes. We don't produce it as a hormone. We need it in our food, and we probably, probably don't consume enough. The major sources of vitamin C, of course, include your citrus fruits, your berries, uh, most fresh vegetables, tomatoes, acerola cherries, uh, and kiwis. And again, ideally tree-ripened, organic when possible, or local when you can get the berries in particular uh, from colder climates and uh, uh, the citrus fruits from warmer climates. Vitamin D. Now, we all know about vitamin D. It's, it's a vitamin that's increased in popularity in the last several years. It's required for the health of your bones and your teeth. 
It has a role to play in preventing cancer. Now, from an immune point of view, the active form of vitamin D actually enhances the immune system by stimulating the activity of macrophage. Macrophages eat up macro, large proteins that might be affecting us. So vitamin D has a really important role to play in that. Microphages are a very important part of the immune system. The major sources of vitamin D include dairy that has not been uh, defatted, not skim milk, unless it's been uh, fortified with vitamin D. Uh, cod liver oil, um, salmon oil, tuna, and egg yolk are very good sources of vitamin D as well. Selenium is an antioxidant. It's very well known as an antioxidant, as a quote-unquote anti-aging supplement. It has anti-cancer effects. It has anti-inflammatory effects because it helps the body produce the most important detoxifying enzyme in the body called glutathione. It has major detoxifying effects as well. And um, the, uh, the enzyme that, that converts T4, the thyroid hormone T4, into its active form T3 is selenium dependent. So it's very important for thyroid function as well. Now from an immune point of view, selenium has shown direct antiviral activity. It increases T lymphocytes. It enhances natural killer cell activity. And your major sources of selenium include yeast, uh, brewer's yeast in particular, garlic, onions, fish from the sea, not from lakes or rivers, liver, cabbage, nuts, whole grain cereals, and pineapples. And again, ideally if they're organic or local and in season uh, would be better. Finally, along with vitamin C, the most popular nutrient from an immune perspective uh, is zinc. Now, zinc, zinc is implicated in over 300 enzyme systems in the body. It's required for cell division. Uh, it's required for the healing of wounds, uh, required for fertility in both men and women, for growth. It has a role to play in accentuating or ensuring good quality sense of odor and smell uh, and taste, rather. Um, and, and studies have shown that one of the signs of zinc deficiency may be a drop in your, in your sense of smell and taste. Necessary for health of the prostate gland, we know that very well, and it plays an important role as far as thyroid function is concerned as well. Zinc has anti-inflammatory effects, and it helps to regulate levels of vitamin A, which we were talking about previously. Now, zinc does help to regulate a wide variety of immune system activities, including T lymphocytes, natural killer cells, interleukin-2, which we talked about earlier, and superoxide dismutase, one of the most important antioxidant enzymes in the body. Zinc has been shown, by the way, to enhance antiviral immune function in AIDS patients, so it really has an important immune-enhancing role. The major sources of zinc include oysters, watercress, whole grain cereals, mushrooms, onions, egg yolk, uh, nuts, broccolis, uh, and certain fish. Your health can be significantly supported by uh, ensuring that you have a significant amount or good amount of nutrients in your diet through the foods and if necessary through supplementation. And immune function is no different. Your immune system does require these vitamins and minerals to be able to function properly. I hope that this presentation helped you. If you know someone who might be interested by these information bulletins, share them with that person. Encourage them to subscribe to our newsletter in order to receive them regularly. Thank you very much. Have a great day.